Disney Realign, Disney Princess, Sleeping Beauty. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, a king named Stefan lived with his queen. For many years, they longed for a child. Finally, their wish was granted. A daughter was born, and they named her Aurora. Overjoyed, the king and queen held a grand celebration. They invited guests from far and wide, including their good friend King Hubert and his young son, Prince Philip. The two kings decided that one day, Philip and Aurora would marry, and their kingdoms would be united. Soon, the royal herald announced the arrival of three more guests, their most exalted excellences, the three good fairies, Mistress Flora, Mistress Fauna, and Mistress Merryweather. The fairies looked fondly at the infant princess. Flora stepped forward. Each of us, the child, may bless with a single gift, no more, no less. Flora waved her wand. Little princess, my gift shall be the gift of beauty. Fauna was next. My gift shall be the gift of song. Merryweather was about to grant her gift when suddenly a great gust of wind blew open the castle doors, thunder clapped, and a tall figure appeared, surrounded by an eerie green glow. It was the evil fairy, Maleficent. I really felt quite distressed at not receiving an invitation, and to show I bear no ill will, I too shall bestow a gift on the child. A wicked smile crossed Maleficent's face. The princess shall indeed grow in grace and beauty, but before the sun sets on her sixteenth birthday, she shall prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel and die. Laughing cruelly, Maleficent vanished in a flash of light. The king and queen were filled with worry. Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather tried to reassure them. Don't despair, your majesties. Merryweather still has her gift to give. The fairies knew that Maleficent's power was too great for Merryweather to undo the curse, but she could soften it. Sweet princess, not in death, but just in sleep, the faithful prophecy you'll keep. And from the slumber you shall wake, when true love's kiss, the spell shall break. Even though Merryweather had softened the curse, the fairies were certain Maleficent would stop at nothing to fulfill her evil prophecy. How could they keep Aurora safe? There must be some way. Suddenly, Flora had an idea. She told the others their plan. They would disguise themselves as normal peasant women and raise the princess in secret, far away from the castle. With heavy hearts, King Stefan and his queen agreed to the plan. They watched sadly as the three fairies whisked the tiny princess away, promising to return on her 16th birthday. Many years passed. Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather raised Aurora in a cozy cottage deep in the forest. They pretended to be her aunts and never used magic. To keep the princess's identity secret, they called her Briar Rose. The young girl grew in grace and beauty, never knowing she was truly a princess. On the morning of her 16th birthday, Briar Rose caught the fairies whispering in the kitchen. And what are you three dares up to? The fairies were startled. Merryweather quickly spoke up. We want you to pick some berries. That's it, berries. They didn't want Briar Rose to find out they had a special birthday celebration planned. As soon as Briar Rose left, the fairies sprang into action. Oh, will she be surprised. A real birthday party. That night, the fairies were going to surprise Briar Rose with a beautiful cake and gown and tell her she was truly a princess. But the fairies were not very good at cooking or sewing without magic. Finally, they decided to use their wands for the preparations. But high in the sky, Maleficent's wicked raven spotted the bright bursts of magic. Meanwhile, deep in the forest, Briar Rose told her animal friends about a prince she had dreamed of. While she was talking, a stranger riding through the woods spotted her. It was Prince Philip. He loved Briar Rose's story and asked her to dance. Briar Rose hesitated. She wasn't supposed to speak to strangers. Prince Philip smiled. 
But don't you remember? We've met before. You said so yourself. Once upon a dream. The two shared a dance and quickly fell in love. Briar Rose hurried home. She couldn't wait to tell her aunts about her new true love. When she arrived, she saw their beautiful gifts. Her heart felt as though it would burst. Oh, you darlings, this is the happiest day of my life. Just wait till you meet him. Him? The fairies grew very worried. They didn't know the man Briar Rose had met was Prince Philip. You're already betrothed to Prince Philip, dear. Flora explained that Briar Rose was actually Princess Aurora. Tonight we're taking you back to your father, King Stephen. Aurora was heartbroken, but she dutifully went with the fairies to the castle. As they left, they didn't see Maleficent's raven watching them go. The raven flew straight to Maleficent. The sun had not yet set, and there was still time to fulfill the curse. At the castle, the fairies gave Aurora a few moments alone. Suddenly, Maleficent appeared and placed the princess in a powerful trance. The evil fairy led her to a secret room with a spinning wheel. Touch the spindle. Touch it, I say. Aurora touched it and instantly fell into a deep sleep. Maleficent cackled as Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether found Aurora collapsed on the floor. Then Maleficent vanished. Sadly, the three fairies brought Aurora to a bedroom high in a tower. Poor King Stephen and the Queen. They'll be heartbroken when they find out. Flora wiped a tear from her eye, and her face grew determined. They're not going to. We'll put them all to sleep until Rose awakens. The fairies use their magic wands to place each member of King Stephen's court into a deep slumber. As Flora flew over King Hubert, she heard him mumble something sleepily. Just been talking to Philip. Seems he's fallen in love with some peasant girl. Flora gasped. Peasant girl? Rose? Prince Philip? She realized the man Aurora had met in the forest. Her one true love was actually Prince Philip. He was the only one who could break the curse. Flora cried out to the other fairies. Come on, we've got to get back to the cottage. Meanwhile, Prince Philip was determined to find the young woman he had danced with in the woods. He rode up to the cottage door. But the moment he stepped inside, Maleficent's evil henchman ambushed him. The evil fairy couldn't risk Philip's breaking her spell on the sleeping princess. Maleficent locked Prince Philip away in her castle dungeon. But just when all seemed lost, the three good fairies arrived. Quickly, they undid the prince's chains. Flora waved her wand. The road to true love may be barred by still many more dangers. So arm thyself with this enchanted shield of virtue and this mighty sword of truth. Maleficent was furious when she saw the prince had escaped. Before he could reach the castle, she transformed into a fearsome dragon and blocked his path. Now shall you deal with me, O oh prince. Prince Philip fought bravely, but the dragon cornered him on a high ledge. Flora flew to Philip and waved her wand over his sword. Sword of truth, fly swift and sure, that evil die and good endure. With all his strength, Philip hurled the sword at the dragon. Its course was true, and it buried itself deep in her heart. With a scream, Maleficent fell from the ledge, never to be seen again. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether quickly led Philip to Aurora's tower. When he reached Aurora's bedside, he gazed lovingly at the sleeping princess. It was the same beautiful girl he had met in the forest. Gently, he laid a soft kiss upon her lips. Aurora's eyes fluttered open, and she smiled. Together, the prince and princess walked down the steps to the great hall. Now that Aurora was awake, the rest of the kingdom began to stir from their slumber as well. King Stephen and the queen were overjoyed to see their daughter. It's Aurora. She's here. Aurora hugged her parents. Then she and Philip began to dance. The three fairies watched happily. Oh, I just love happy endings. The end. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Don't miss our next Disney princess story, Aurora and the Helpful Dragon. Bye-bye.